the EP Podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found, and always at the eppodcast.com. And welcome into the EP Podcast. My name is Chris, Hannah at the other end of my nine foot homemade oak bar here in my basement at Nevergreen Park. And this is 30 Minutes of Good in a World of Dumb known as the EP Podcast. Mayoral candidate Sean Good joins us today for the second time since she announced that she is running for mayor of Evergreen Park against Kelly Burke. Plus, we will unveil a brand new segment called The Airing of Grievances. And a local business helped me gain at least an inch in height. I'm not joking, with some kind of witchcraft, I'm going to get into this. Plus, so much more what's going on in and around Evergreen Park, all in 30 minutes, and it's brought to you by the First National Bank of Evergreen Park. We are all looking for a fresh start this year. First National Bank of Evergreen Park can help you consolidate or pay down debt with an everyday loan. So here in early 2021, you can get started on solid ground. No surprise fees, low fixed rate, up to 24 months to pay it off. The everyday loan gives you breathing room to get back on track. Learn more right now at bankevergreenpark.com slash EDL for everyday loan member FDIC and equal housing lender. It was a nice weekend to get out in the EP. Seriously. I think I bounced around to a few different places. Uh, Evergreen Park just a buzz this entire weekend. Got over to Porter Cullens on Friday. Also bounced over to Durbin's. Our good friends over there at Durbin's are having this fish fry. It's insane. I- I've told you guys before, they got like the brand new kitchen. And everything's all different inside. The family's basically just taken over the place again. And you could tell. And I can highly recommend that. I had a great time at both places. Good times at Evergreen Park. Good solid crowd celebrating and enjoying the thawing of winter in a responsible way. It was good to see. And then on Sunday, I got to watch the White Sox play spring training baseball. And there were fans in the stands. If you're not entering this week feeling a little bit positive, slap yourself just once and smile. It is now time for your EP podcast, Word on the Street, brought to you by Mike Thauer, Country Financial, the guy I go to for my insurance needs, wants to help you with yours. Visit him today, 3923 West 95th Street in Evergreen Park, or give him a call at 708-425-1559. Tough news for kids this past week, not yet in high school. Archdiocese of Catholic Schools authorized the resumption of selected sports this spring so they could go play sports like the high school kids. And then eight area principals, including Martyrs and Redeemer here in Evergreen Park, signed a letter saying they weren't going to do it. And I get it. Logistical issues. Maybe they just found out it's last minute. The only thing I hated about the letter, though, was the notion it was for the safety of the kids. There's high school kids playing. The disease is actually easier on you the younger you get, not the older you get. Am I the only person that's really nervous about what this generation is going to do to the rest of us when they come into power one day? They are going to get older, you know. The good news is there's an open house for 5th through 8th graders here in the EP at the Evergreen Park Youth Department. They're open, they're operating, and they're giving the kids something to do after school. This Tuesday, March 2nd, 5th and 8th graders can come by the open house from 6 to 8 p.m. Get a reservation to be a part of it now, 708-229-3377. That's your word on the street. We move on on the EP Podcast, found everywhere podcasts can be found and always at the eppodcast.com. Imagine, one day, out of nowhere, you need your car towed. Who are you gonna call? You have no idea. Right, because none of us think about that until it actually happens. So I'm gonna give you a name, Dreamers Towing and Recovery. Located in Evergreen Park, Illinois, they will tow your vehicle, locally or at a long distance, at a very affordable price. What happens when your car needs a jump start? Dreamers Towing and Recovery. What happens when you're locked out of your car? Dreamers Towing and Recovery. You got a junk car, you don't know how to get rid of it, and you just want to move along and get some cash? They buy your junk cars. Covering the EP and the surrounding south side of Chicago, Dreamers is there when you need them with 24-hour service. Call them, 773-410-4549. 773-410-4549. Turn a sudden nightmare into a dream. 
with Dreamers Towing and Recovery. Join us down here at the EP Podcast. It's our second appearance on the show, but the first time at the nine-foot homemade oak bar. Yeah. One of the two candidates running for mayor to fill in the role and take over after Mayor James Sexton retires. Sean Good is down here. How are you, Sean? I'm doing great, Chris. How are you? I'm good. I appreciate you stopping by and talking with us and and, and just kind of chatting. You brought over some beers. I appreciate that. Yeah. We had Dennis Duffy. Think about this. Who's retired now from the village? Yeah. Who came down here and was like, "What am I doing on this show?" Right. <laughs> We've had so many different people who come in here, and I think for the people that hold public office, or in your case, are running for public office, it has to be something where you're just like, "Oh my God, what are, what are they going to talk about when they're down here?" Is it nerve wracking? It's an absolutely lovely and joyous experience. <laughs> so uh, we're glad to have you down here. I, the first question I got to ask you is, how's it going? Because it's going fantastic. We talked to you and I, I we were just starting and I was like, OK, well, I, I was like, let's check in with her. It's been a little over a month since we talked to her and you're running you're running for public office here. And it's I think it's going to become even more public as you get closer to the election. I feel like we got two candidates here that that both are like, I want to win this thing and they're going to it. And so what is it like at this point, the response, how you feel at this point? Well, on the way over, I stopped people and I was campaigning and people that I meet in the street that I'm either familiar with or know me, I'm getting all thumbs up, all positive. Great. I'm, I'm ecstatic. This, this is such a big event for Evergreen Park. As you know, Mr. Vacco had seven terms as mayor. Um, the United Homeowners Party itself is almost, I think, 60 years old. So I understand and I'm I'm at the residents level. I'm at the voters level, and I'm one of them. So I fully see, and I'm very aware. I do as much research as possible, and I know that a lot of people don't like change. As you know, when they rebuilt the hospital, a lot of people have those strong connections. This is very familiar. People like to call it Mayberry, and I think all of that is true. I also strongly believe we have to do something more to bring us into the current setting. So what does that mean? You said something similar to us the first time that you were on, that you, that you, you want to bring us forward from what the current setting is. You want to, you, there, there's some sort of change that needs to be made. And, but I, I'm kind of curious, as a, do you have specifics? Like, is there something that like stands out to you that you're like, this needs to be changed? Yes. The specifics are it is time for an equal voice for the residents that pay the tax in the town to let them be number one heard and validated and add my professional take on the ongoing complaints that the residents of Evergreen have. I'm going to reprioritize once again and go through each issue from the top number one issue all the way down the list to resolve ongoing complaints, along with bringing new, fresh ideas to Evergreen Park. How are you hearing about this? Uh, are people coming to you saying that, hey, I've been voicing concerns, I'm not being heard, is this how you're learning about this? I've known about it for quite some time, and as far as people coming to me, yes. I've had more than a couple of handfuls of people reaching out, did you know this happened, or my own personal experience, I just don't feel that it has had exactly enough attention. I don't feel that it was handled properly. And it is now time for me to say, hey, I'm ready to step up. People like me, you know, you just have to be liked as a politician. This is something new. And I think people really like this. I have no connections here. I don't, ha I don't have any specific group that I favor. I could be completely impartial. And I think that states a lot, not only about Evergreen Park, but all of Illinois. People could see me out there. And how do I connect with so many people? I'm pretty popular. 48 years I've lived here. My older brothers and sisters who were ahead of me in Evergreen Park schools, both the District 124 and 236. Um, yes, they have established a lot of our family friends. My mother, of course, was very popular. And as you know, I love to talk. I, I love to hear what's going on. How could I help? That's my next thing. How could I help you out? I, I understand how the political game is is played. I, I understand that you want to make sure that you, you know, you got to put yourself in the best light. If I were running for office, I'd be doing the same thing. But you tell me there's complaints and they're not being addressed. Can you give me one or two of them that like as an example 
So it's not like a vague thing. Like, is there some issue that's going on that you don't think is being addressed? Through families of Facebook, and I know it can be a danger zone at times, I think it's more dangerous to drink in Facebook maybe than to drink and drive, you know? Okay. It could be very damaging to bring in the first thought, and you know this, and put it out on Facebook. That's why it's not even on my phone. I don't even, I, I, I got to make myself have to turn on my laptop to use Facebook. That's on, that's on purpose. But are you saying that you're getting these examples through Facebook, and what are they? Some. The number one complaint that I have seen is the red light camera at 87th and Kedzie. Okay. So then, of course, I delved in, and I read as much as I could about red flex and safe speed. And what I found out is we all know that these cameras were installed in Evergreen Park in 2018. There were four of them. Now, if you're watching what's going on in the rest of the Southwest suburbs, you're going to have to ask yourself at some point, was Evergreen Park involved? Okay, so you're you're implying that Evergreen Park might have been involved in some wrongdoing when it came to the red light cameras. I wouldn't exactly say it that way. I'm not... I'm speculating only the implication part that is not up for me to decide, but I know for a fact, and I have met with others through my petitioning process. What are you going to do, Sean? I've been out there too, Chris, during a very dangerous time throughout a pandemic, through a holiday season and a last minute rush. I didn't, I was so gracefully accepted into homes because the information was arcane it was withheld. It was secretive. Oh, this is being, I, I endorse uh, so-and-so, the current also serving state rep. And I thought, I, I thought for sure, honest, that a lot more people would have came forward and tried to run. What you kind of did there, and I want to make sure I give you a chance to clarify it is, you said that you're speculating that there was some wrongdoing, and then you also, you know, insinuated that the state representative, which I can only assume is Kelly Burke, would have some sort of involvement in it. Is there any kind of tangible proof? Is there something that you're you're seeing or is there something that you're trying to say here that you need to clarify? I make no reference to the fact that I insinuate anything against Miss Burke. Okay. I just want to make so sure. The, that answer is no. Jim Sexton's the mayor. His wife works over at the rec department. Okay. Uh, we also have Kelly Burke. She's running for mayor. The only thing I've seen of her husband, the only reason I know his name is Terry, is because there's a there's an interesting koozie floating around right now in a lot of the bars that say elect Terry Burke first gentleman of Evergreen Park, <laughs> which I thought was funny. I mean, you got to admit that's that's funny. I love it. But I didn't even know. I just thought that was kind of funny. I've never met Terry. I don't know anything about him, but I, I've seen the koozie before. OK, I have seen and I'm curious, uh, you know, the involvement of your your husband, because he is on Facebook and he's pushing you. And I get it. My wife was running for office. I might want to push her, too. But he's on Facebook. I see he's very active and he sometimes gets into some like debates with people on, on it. <laughs> That's obvious. Um, I know that he has reached out not only to me at some point to talk about you. He's reached out to Hannah. He's reached out to the folks at the patch. He He's very involved. How involved is he? And is there a role for him in a Sean Good administration? Like, do you see him all of a sudden saying, I'm going to I'm going to help you out? Or is this separate things? Because I'm just curious. I will not hire my husband. I've been asked this question before. I wouldn't hire my wife. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you notice, Hannah's not my wife. She's the female co-host, not the woman that I married upstairs. There's a reason for that. My husband is absolutely delighted. He's 100% my support. He has my back. He has a great job. Um, he's been verbal. There are some times where I'm like, Brian, and I have to give him my index finger, mm-hmm. which is a you know, I'm giving him the index finger. No right. other finger but that Just one. The index he finger. hasn't gotten to the other one. All right. Yet. <laughs> so, um, yes, and, and it kind of goes along the same thing. I, I know uh, Terry Burke. I used to see him at the train, of course, um, at 91st in, um, I want to say, Longwood over there some mornings. We were always very friendly. Hello, this. I know Kelly very well. The, the issue I could say about both of us, we're some very strong women. So I was out and I was talking. I ran into a friend of mine who who lives on your block. And mm-hmm. he goes, you know, what's really funny is it must be really tense right now that Sean's running for mayor because she shares a property line with the mayor. Is that true or is that wrong? That's 100% true. So you guys share like a fence line? So, I mean, like when you take out the garbage, like he's indoors Kelly Burke and your neighbors. Like I, I kept thinking like, okay, well, Sean's from like another part of Evergreen or something like that, but your neighbors. I live in Mr. Vacco's old home. Okay. So oh, that, okay. that's that's a that's got to be a really weird thing though, a weird dynamic right now. Is it or no? 
Well, I would just like to say that um, it's interesting. <laughs> Man, I feel like there's I feel like there's onion layers to be peeled back on that right there. <laughs> that Did you I, just find that out? I got told that about a week or so ago. By, I bumped into a friend of mine, and I had no idea. Honest <laughs> to goodness, I was like, "Are you kidding me?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, they live right next to the door." I was like, "Come on!" Chris I was, like, was texting gotta me be, like, "It's gonna be the weirdest trip to the garbage can every week to well, go since, pull them out to the front lawn." You know, it, since our yards meet, um, we try to respectfully give each other complete space as right. one needed. Obviously, I'm in my backyard a lot more since we put the pool in. And, um, yeah, I probably could write a book on that issue, but I'm not going to. It's been it's been very interesting. I'd like to just say that, once again, I have tremendous respect for the outgoing Mr. Sexton and his family. I know they're looking so forward to their retirement. I I think overall he's done a great job in so many areas. Would you have run if he was uh, if he was still in there? Yes, absolutely. Um, I've been approached again over the last couple of years. I did career day at Mother Macaulay last year, and people asked me, hey, are you going to run again? Of course. Of course I'm going to try You're it again. You're on the ballot this time. I'm on the ballot this you must time. must feel pretty good about that. I feel great. Excellent. That's Sean Good. She's running for mayor. She's on the EP podcast, and you were nervous about it. I think you did a good job, Sean. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you so much. Does your financial advisor actually take time to listen to you? Is your financial strategy personalized for you and your family? Will your financial advisor be there as your life and financial situation changes? Why worry about those things? When Tom Walsh is nearby, he's your local Edward Jones financial advisor. He works with you, focusing on what's important to you. He uses an established process to create personalized financial strategy, and he partners with you to help your strategy stay on track. Listen, families in South Chicago land have been benefiting from Tom's get to know you approach and do the right thing values for over 18 years. Contact my close personal friend and also a fellow Brother Ice alumni, Tom Walsh. He's your local Edward Jones advisor located in Mount Greenwood, right outside of the EP at 111th and Kedzie, member SIPC. So just a little bit ago, we heard from Sean Good. She's running for mayor against Kelly Burke. Representative Burke is set to be on the show next week. Make sure you listen up for that. John Brand from Open Outcry is going to be back in here as well. And we will be joined by the head coach of Evergreen Park High School's football team as they get ready to start a spring schedule. That and much more expected on Monday's show. But getting back to Sean Good, there was a part in that interview. I'm sure you heard it. It took me aback a little bit. It seemed like she was saying something inappropriate happened with the red light cameras and the village and and other people. And I tried to get her to open up and explain that and if there was proof and stuff like that. And I, I didn't get what I wanted out of it. You might be like, that's cool. I'm good with it. She answered my question. You might be aggravated by that. Rather than go on Facebook and scream, the EP Podcast wants to bring you a brand new segment we're going to do every once in a while. It is inspired by that Seinfeld episode, the Festivus one, where George Costanza's dad had the airing of grievances. I love it. I have love a lot it. of problems with you people, and <laughs> you're going to hear about them today. Not you. Those of you that listen, I'm sure, are wonderful people. people. But I, look, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. One thing that just drove me nuts this week, all right? And and trust me, folks, if you're interested ever airing a grievance on the EP podcast, I would like to hear your grievance. In fact, I'm going to give you we a phone will, number. We will, we will talk about your grievance. No, we no, will no. do it. I'm going to let them actually say their grievance on the air. We will do that. 708-459-8406. 708-459-8406. You can leave a message anytime. Hopefully it's after you've had way too many drinks and you're irrational, but I would like to hear your grievances. Now, let's get to what happened to me this week. Okay. Everything thaws out last week, right? Yes. The weather gets nicer. Oh, it's wonderful. People it's are used to driving down the street in the Arctic. And as a result, I don't think they've really been obeying any traffic laws lately. So I have to go and pick up my kids from school. Erica goes, you want to go pick them up? There's like mud in the street and water. You know, they're going to walk through it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll I'll grab them all up. The last one I go to is right up the street, maybe about six, seven blocks on 99th, which is Southwest School, where my kindergartner's at. And I go pick up Nick and I throw him in the car 
and he's sitting in the back seat. And this is what he observes with his father. This is what I observe. I, I had parked the car a block to the west of 99th and Central Park, the main intersection where you mm-hmm. have all the kids crossing the corner. Yeah. And Central Park is a, you know, more busy street, I would say. Yes. I come up to a stop sign. I watch somebody blow a stop sign and almost hit a kid. <gasps> because the snow drifts are still high, but the kids are walking because it's nice out. So they're lower than the drifts and people are not stopping oh at stop God. signs. So I, I mean, I held my breath. I was like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. What are you going to do? Like you're just watching in slow motion. So now I'm like, well, that kid lived. So I make, <laughs> I make a right. And now I'm coming down 98th street from 99th. I'm at 98th street. And I get to 98th in central park and I pull up to the stop sign. Now I'm the kind of person, especially in my own neighborhood. Like I know when I was younger, I was a jerk when I was driving, but I was always taught stop. Yes. At least pay attention because God forbid you hit somebody. Your life's <laughs> over. I get to the intersection, 98th Central Park, and there's this little girl, and she's going to cross 98th Street. And she waves me like I'm going to go. And I'm like, no, 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 sweetheart. I'm supposed to stop. You're supposed to walk. You're yeah. safe. There's nobody coming in any direction, right? She steps out on the street. Somebody comes flying down Central Park from the direction of Southwest, which is only a block away, throws a right turn, never hits the brake, and almost wipes her out. I've gone two blocks and seen nearly two vehicular homicides in Evergreen oh my Park. God. And I'm now I'm angry. See, now I'm angry. And I'm, like, I'm angry. I try I'm not. I'm angry. Well, no, I got angry. So now I get behind the car that just almost killed that kid. And I'm like, I'm following this car. And yeah. when they stop someplace, I'm going to pull up next to him and be like, slow down. You almost killed somebody. Yeah. So, but I've got my kid in the back of the car. And so as I go a couple of blocks here, I'm starting to calm down. They don't blow the next stop sign. I'm like, okay, all right, take a breath, take a breath. You don't want to do this. And they make a left moving away from the direction of my house. I'm at Circle Park. And I'm like, all right, I'm making a right. I'm heading back up the 99th Street now where my my house is. So I'm like, leave them be. Like, there's something telling me, just let them go. Oh, just God, you're go, a better just, person just than me. <laughs> so I make a right, and I look in my rear view as a car rides up right on my butt and almost hits me. And it's four kids wearing a local high school color that are driving home from school now they almost slam into me because I'm driving the normal speed and they want to go around me as I drive up Holman Avenue. Now, this is in between Circle Park and Holman Avenue. They're weaving their car behind me as I drive up the street because I'm going too slow because I'm just driving what the speed should be. Yeah. So I'm angry at them, right? So now I'm like, now I'm just... Oh, I'm just, vindictive. Oh, I'm so I would angry. be like taking their like, license plate numbers and blasting it on social media. Like, is this your car? Is this your kid? I've driven at this point six blocks. I've watched two near deaths, okay, of children. And I've got this group of jerks behind me that are just all over the place. And I'm like, come on. I'm just angry. So now I get up to the stop sign and I'm preoccupied with them. Like, I'm going to pause at the stop sign extra long. Yes. Because I'm angry. Yes. And I get up to 99th Street now, and I'm going to make a left turn Yes. down 99th Street. I wait at the stop sign. There's nobody on 99th. Yeah. I could have gone any time. I'm purposely waiting. Mm-hmm. Now I start to pull out. There's nobody at the stop signs. There's nobody even approaching the intersection. And I'm in the middle of the turn. And because I'm turning slowly, because I'm aggravated with them, this is the only reason I'm in the intersection for the girl on her cell phone that's coming down 99th Street towards Kedzie who blows the stop sign <gasps> completely and screeches her tire up to about three inches to the rear passenger side where Nick is sitting. Oh my God. I, that's the, Chris, at that point, I would have blocked the road. I would have turned my car sideways and I would be out of my car. And that little girl would be i have driven seven blocks at this point. I've watched three stop signs get no, blown. No, at that point, that's when I just pull my car sideways, block her. She can't get around and I am going to be like in her face, I'm, tapping her windshield. I was like, this is the worst drive I've ever had in Evergreen Park. I drive past my house and I'm going to drive all the way to Kesey now very slowly while okay. she weaves behind me. And the idiots from the high school behind her are weaving behind me because they all want to go Mach 5 because the sun's out. Yeah. So I get up to the intersection now. I'm going to make a left turn to come back around because I get the Kedzie. She pulls up next to me and I look at her. And she has the audacity to start yelling at me about how she don't care about what my opinion was of her. Who cares if she almost hit me? And I'm just looking at her. That was the response. The boldness of I blew a stop sign and what are you going to do to me? There were some choice words. I drove home. Okay. I come in the house. I'm infuriated. Erica's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm calling the police department. 
Good. Good. So I call and I want to tell everybody how this works because I was impressed. Call the police department. And what happens is they put me like a regular case. They sent me to 911. They didn't take it at the desk. I was like, I just, all I want is for you guys to cover these stop signs. Yeah. They're around the schools and I watched three near tragic deaths occur in a six or seven block radius. The weather is getting warmer. There needs to be a police presence out. Yeah. And a police officer called me within like three minutes and took down all the information and was like, we have special cars that specifically cover these areas and they're supposed to go to wherever there's any problem spots. I'm going to put this down as a problem spot. And we'll start saturating that. We'll write some tickets and scare people. Good. And we'll get people. And that isn't going to get the three people that almost killed people that day. They'll stop. But maybe it'll slow things down. Yeah. And I said, I don't want to be a, pr- a pain in the butt. You guys have bigger things than this. And the guy goes, no, you're a resident. Call anytime. We depend on you guys to tell us what's going on. If you don't tell us there are people cutting through your neighborhood because they've decided that that's the quickest way now to get from Kedzie to Pulaski yeah. or from Western to Kedzie mm-hmm. or from 95th to, to, to 103rd. If you don't tell speed people bones. You need speed that bones. This, is, this is a problem, this is an issue, then it'll never get fixed. But we have special patrols that we have details where now that'll go onto the list and those details will provide it. Good. And I just, and the only reason I shared a story was not for my frustration, just, just so you know. You actually have a resolution to it. Like we good, always have good. people that get angry. Yeah. You have a resolution. So my my airing of grievance was my anger over it. But the resolution There's occurs. There's a resolution so I'm happy. to I'm it. I'm happy with the resolution. Good. Are you a CFO, HR professional, or owner of a company, big or small, and you're tired of the typical health insurance premium increases each and every year? Out of control premiums with no end in sight. Well, now there is the Elite Benefits Formula. This process has saved employers and their employees thousands or even tens of thousands of dollars each year. These strategies are avoided by most insurance professionals, and the insurance companies definitely do not want you to know about them. But Elite Benefits of America is ready to help you. Just about all employers in the Chicagoland area can now take advantage of some or all of these strategies and start saving money. Butch Zemar from Elite Benefits of America wants you to reach out to him today. Visit EliteBenefits.net or call 708-535-3006. As we hit the door here on the EP Podcast, who am I kidding? I live here. I'm not hitting the door. I'm going to be down at the bar now having a good time. But as the show ends, I want to give a quick shout out to some folks that I guess I'm going to be doing a photo op with the day this show comes out on Monday morning. I've been working out, losing weight, down double digits right now. And I've been working on my core muscles at Core Fitness and Physical Therapy right here in Evergreen Park. The girls, uh, Hannah, you of course have done it before, and my wife Erica have been doing that for over a year. They've been going to Core, they've been doing it online now during the pandemic, they've been doing their Pilates, and the suggestion was I should try it. And I got to tell you this story, I'll be taking a picture with one of my trainers tomorrow, Stephanie over there, and she made me a full inch taller the other day. I'm not even lying. She does like this weird thing where like she's stretching out my muscles, right? And she's like, you know, things start to compact with your muscles. So we're going to do this stretch and I'm going to work on your leg and my hips been bothering. She's like, we're going to do this. And so she does this whole thing where like, I'm doing a lot of the work. She's showing me how to do it. I'm doing this huge stretching exercise to open up these muscles underneath the main ones that we always work out. Like if you run or whatever, the core muscles are the muscles underneath it. And after the stretch, she does this little thing at the end where she's kind of like pulling on the leg a little bit because now it's loose. And she goes, okay, now put both your feet together. And I'm not even kidding. One foot was easily an inch or two further down the table than the other foot. Like I was lopsided. I had one long leg, it looked like, and one that was slight, that was shorter by at least an inch or two. Like if I would have walked out the door, I'd have been walking at a lean for the rest of my life is what it seemed like. And I was like, you're going to do that to the other one, right? She starts laughing. She goes, yeah. So they do the other one. And then all of a sudden they're both right next to each other after she stretches it out. And I got up and I was walking around. I said, I feel taller. (laughs) I tell you something. I never feel like I did a lot of work when I'm there. The next day, though, you could feel it in your body, and the results are there, man. So big shout out to Stephanie and Core Fitness and Physical Therapy. You know, they do online classes. I'm gonna give them a quick plug. 
You can give them a call at 708-422-0990. Uh, you can drop by there at 2940 95th Street, although I'm thinking in this day and age, it probably is best to check out the online stuff and possibly going in and seeing Stephanie or the others that are working and doing great work over there. Heck, they made me taller at Core Fitness PT. Dot com. That's the end of the EP podcast. Next week, like I said, Representative Kelly Burke is going to be in here. She's running for mayor against our guest today, Sean Good. Thank you very much to both of them for coming on the show a couple of times. John Brand going to be on here as well, our good friend from Open Outcry. We have not talked to him in a while. He's bringing by goodies, and by goodies, I mean beer. I didn't mention it earlier. There's a new company here in Evergreen Park that helps young kids train to get better at their sports of choice. We're going to meet the neighbors and talk with them next week. And the head coach of Evergreen Park High School football on this program as they get ready to kick off their spring season. We're packed. Make sure you are subscribed. There's a button on whatever player you're using. We are available everywhere from iHeartRadio to Spotify. Tell Alexa, play the EP podcast, Apple podcast, Google podcast, anywhere podcast can be found and always at the EPPodcast.com. Have a great week. Another show is wrapped up. Another show's in the books. Another show is wrapped up. And then by the looks, it's going to be a good one. And we'll see you next week. And the dude is baseman. And the dude is baseman. Another show is wrapped up. Another show is wrapped up. Another show is wrapped up. And it's in the books. Another show is wrapped up. Another show is wrapped up. And by the looks, it's gonna be a good one. It is basement. Oh, broadcast basement. The nudist basement. The broad basement. Slancha. The EP podcast. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at the eppodcast.com.